I'll tell you Psalm 119. I want to I'll just give you some thoughts tonight about a word we don't like to hear about. And it's the word affliction, afflictions. David mentions it several times in Psalm 119, and we'll begin in verse 65. Psalm 119 is the longest uh, chapter in the Bible. It's right in the center of your Bible. If you take your Bible and just try to find the exact middle of it, you'll come to the book of Psalms. And uh, so it's easy to find. And every verse in Psalm 119 has a reference to the Word of God. So this is the Bible Psalm, every, every verse. And sometimes uh, it's called the Word, sometimes it's called the Laws, sometimes it's called Precepts. Uh, and so there's several words that are used, but it is in reference to the Word of God. Now we're in Psalm 119 and verse 65. Thou hast dwelt well with me, with thy servant, O Lord, according unto thy word. And that's a great principle if you think about it. You know, how is God going to deal with you? Well, he has his own rules and regulations, and they're found in the word of God. And so he deals with us, his servants, according to his word. So it's not like he makes up the rules as he goes along. If you read the Bible, you'll know what is when what's happening in your life uh, is coming from God because it matches the Word of God, or maybe if it's coming from the devil, or if it's coming from your flesh. So that's one of the reasons why it's so important, and I want to encourage you tonight, get in your Bible, not just read it, but study your Bible. Verse 66, teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I have believed thy commandments. Here's our, one of our theme verses. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now have I kept thy word. So there's a principle there. God afflicted him, and after he afflicted him, he learned obedience to the word. Verse 71, skip down to verse number 71. It is good for me that I have been afflicted. Oh, my can you say that? Can you say that tonight? I'm glad God whooped me. <laughs> I'm glad God chastened me. I'm glad he afflicted me. It is good for me that I have been afflicted that I might learn thy statutes. So David said, this affliction drove me to the Bible. And that was what was good about it. Last verse is verse 75. And he says, I know, O Lord, that thy judgments are are right, and the judgments is the word of God, and that thou in faithfulness hast afflicted me. We talk about the faithfulness of God, faithfulness in his presence, faithfulness in providing for us, but here David said he's also faithful to afflict me. And so those are strange thoughts to us. But if you read the Word of God, it'll help you. Have you ever prayed for pain <laughs> and uh, suffering and distress or affliction? We don't pray for these things. Affliction could mean pain or suffering or sickness or trouble or distress in a lot of different forms. Well, let me ask you this. Have you ever prayed, Lord, I, I want to be like you? Is not the whole purpose of all these things working to our good that we might be conformed to the image of Christ? And so we pray, in a sense, uh, we, want to, we want to be more like Jesus. We know that all the things that God does in our life is to make us more conformed to the image of Christ. So he's expressing, have you ever expressed to God a desire to be more like Jesus? Is it possible to be like Christ without being afflicted? Christ suffered in every way. In Isaiah 53, 4, it's a familiar verse. He said, surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem, uh, esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. 
Jesus was afflicted on Calvary. And it goes on to say he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. That's another good principle, that when we're under affliction, when we're under in trouble, in stressful times, in times of loss, is that we just really need to keep our mouth shut. Instead of playing, complaining about to God and complaining about the situation we're in, uh, David said, I, I'm not going to open my mouth because I'll probably say the wrong thing. So listen, here's the point I'm getting at. If we pray to be like Jesus, Lord, help me to walk with you. Help me to be like Jesus. Uh, work out out in my life that I want to be conformed to the image of Christ. If you pray that way, then you're really praying for affliction. Because all things work together for good. What things? Trouble. All things. So you're really praying for affliction in an indirect way. You're praying for affliction. Psalm 310, Paul put it this way. He said that I may know him. So Paul's been, he, listen, this is after Paul's been saved probably 30 years. And in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 10, he said, Oh, that I may know him. Not in salvation, but in personal relationship. And I want to know the power of his re resurrection. And then he said, I want to know the fellowship of his sufferings. The fellowship that only comes through suffering. Being made conformable unto his death. Christ died to himself. He said, I did not come to do my own will. I came to do the, the will of the Father. And, uh, and so, you know, ask yourself the question, which came first, the cross or the resurrection? The suffering or the victory? Is it possible to be like Jesus without being afflicted? I don't think so. Matthew 26, when he's talking about the Last Supper, he said, my body, which is broken for you. It was broken. He was beaten. He was the crown of thorns, everything, beaten with a rod, his beard plucked from his face. And so his body was broken and his blood was shed. So he suffered physically, but he also suffered emotionally, we would say. In the garden, he was saying, well, he said, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. He's praying and he's facing Calvary that night, then early the next morning. And he says, my soul is exceeding sorrowful, sorrow, affliction, trouble, Spiritually, he said in John 13, 21, this same time, my spirit is troubled within me. He's troubled, so Jesus is troubled in every way, physically, emotionally, spiritually. And there has always been a connection between suffering and godliness and holiness and in our lives. As I said, Romans 8, 28 said that God is conforming us to his image. Things are not accidental, all things are working together to conform us to the image of Christ. David said to himself, why do the righteous suffer and the wicked prosper? He said, why are the, the righteous people, the good people suffering? Because God's continued doing work and we'll never, get, we'll never be perfect in this life. And so uh, cheer up, you're going to be afflicted in some way till you die. And I think the older we get, the more afflicted we get, especially physically. And then Moses, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 that Moses chose to suffer affliction with the people of God rather than to bow down to, uh, to Pharaoh. He chose to suffer affliction with the people of God. Job said, when I am tried, when I am afflicted, when I am tested, I shall come forth as gold. See, there is a victory and a blessing on the other side of affliction. You have to get through the affliction. And, and Job said, I shall come forth as gold. I'll come forth a, a better Christian. I'll come forth shining for the glory of God. Paul said in 1 Thessalonians, he talked about his affliction and the check. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, he listed all of his, said, I've been beaten, I've been in prison, I've been shipwrecked. And he went down a whole long list of things that he had suffered. 
but he never was complaining about it. And he said, there's a thorn in my flesh, but God gave me grace. Joseph suffered affliction. Man, can you imagine? He's um, betrayed by his brothers, hated by his brothers, sold into slavery, lied about, thrown into prison, probably for 17 years or so. From the time he was about 17 until he was about 30 years old, uh, he's in prison. That's, that's about 15 years. Uh, but he suffered. He suffered. What, what did he do? He came forth as gold. He didn't let it make him bitter. He wasn't bitter at God. He wasn't bitter at anybody else. He wasn't bitter at Potiphar. He wasn't bitter at his brothers. They came down and he said, God sent me ahead of you to preserve you and your family. Listen, he, he said, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. So his affliction, he understood there was a purpose behind it. And we have to, we don't get caught up in the suffering and miss the purpose of it. So we need to ask God to help us with that. Charles Spurgeon, probably one of the greatest preachers that ever lived, beside the Apostle Paul, continually suffered depression. He had to take months off, and he went from England over to France. He had a home in France, and he had to go over there and spend a couple months to get himself all, you know, out of depression, come back and preach. But he, he, bought, he, he fought that all of his life. He had other things, physical problems, gout, all that. Fanny Crosby lost her sight as a young child, just about five or six years old. She was blind. And if you'll take your hymnal, you'll see that she wrote many, many, many psalms in our hymn book. And someone asked her and said, would you do it? Would you, would you want to have sight? Would you rather have sight all these years? He said, no. He, she said, no. She said, I've seen things uh, from the Lord that people who have sight don't see. And so she had a relationship with the Lord, and the Lord let her see great truths that she wrote about in her hymns. Here's David. Think about David. He, his children turned out wrong, just about all of them. Um, they hated one another, murdered one another. How many times did he walk to the graveyard and bury a child? Suffered from the hands of God and, Moses, or, and, and Saul. God and man, God put him through the suffering. God allowed the suffering. But then Saul chased him for years, tried to kill him. But here's what David said. If you go, go back in your verse, in verse number 67, Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now have I kept thy word. He said, This affliction drove me to obedience. This affliction drove me back to God. This affliction that I could not handle has been good because it drove me back to the Bible and I began to obey the Bible. Now let me give you three thoughts real quickly. Number one, that, you know, affliction does, it helps us to love the Word of God. That's what David is saying. He said, I've kept thy word. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I have kept thy word. And so, it causes us to fall in love with the Word of God, to appreciate the Word of God. Listen, sometimes God has to just drive us down to our knees before we'll read our Bibles and pray. And you'll not keep the Word, really, if you don't love the Word. Thy, you know, He said, Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Even Jesus said in John 14, 21, He that hath my commandments and keep them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. So Jesus said, he, hath my, he that hath my commandments, and all they had in his day was the Old Testament. He said, and keepeth them. You keep this. Keep the law of God as best you can. He said, he it is that loveth me. So you can't say I love Jesus and not and live in a disobedience to the Word of God. It's really easy to sing, Oh, how I love Jesus. But in verse 47, he said, I will delight myself in thy commandments, which I have loved. And then in verse 72, The law of my mouth is better unto me than thousands of gold and silver. Verse 97, Oh, how I love thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Verse 103, how sweet are thy words unto my taste, uh, taste, yea, sweeter than honey in my mouth. 
127, verse 127, Therefore I love thy commandments above gold, yea, above fine gold. And then 165 that I just quoted, Great peace of they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them, nothing shall off into them, nothing shall knock them off their feet. Job lost everything, but he bowed before God and said, Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Job said, It looks as if God's against me, but even if he slays me, I'm going to trust him. How? Well, Job esteemed the words of his mouth. He said, More than my necessary food. I know fellows who'll say, who have a theme, they'll either say, No Bible, no breakfast. Not going to eat until I read my Bible first. Or they'll say, No bed, no, break, no, no Bible. So they won't go to bed until they read their Bible. Secondly, not only will it help us to love the Word of God, but affliction will make us to learn the Word of God. A, a lot of people read their Bible, but they really don't meditate on it. You know, there's a great emphasis in the Psalms itself here that we're to meditate day and night in the Word of God. Verse 71, It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. So the Word of God, if we study it, if we meditate on it, one of the things it will do, it will change our character. David said, I will praise thee with the uprightness of my heart when I shall have learned thy righteous judgments. So the righteous judgments of God, the righteous words of God bring a righteousness into our heart. You see the difference between, well, religion cleans up the outside, but the Word of God will change your character from the inside, and it'll finally, it'll show on the outside. It'll change your conduct. David said in verse 34, Give me understanding, and I shall keep thy law. Yea, I shall observe it with my whole heart. It'll change your conduct. He said, I'll observe it. I will obey it. it I'm gonna, I want it to change me. Some say, I love it. I'll die for the Bible. But they don't even read it. They don't study it. And when persecution really comes, they won't stand. And then the last thing is that affliction will cause us to lean on the Word. As I said, it takes sometimes affliction and trouble to drive us to our knees, drive us to the Bible, and believing that God has an answer. In verse 75, I know, O Lord, that thy, right, or that thy judgments are right, and that thou hast in faithfulness afflicted me. He said in verse 68, Thou art good and doest good. Teach me thy statutes. So we got to learn to lean on the book. Lean on God. When you lean on the Bible, you're leaning on the Lord, His Word. Fanny Crosby's blindness was no accident. She knew that. God allowed her to become blind. The doctor made a mistake and it blinded her. Uh, and she knew that was no accident. She wrote those songs like, When I get to heaven, I want to see my Savior first of all. And because uh, she knew then her eyes would be open and she'd get her sight back. Paul's thorn was no accident. He said, it's the secret of my power. He said, God has afflicted me that I might know the power of God. You see, God is too wise to make a mistake. And he loves me too much to do me wrong. I have to trust him like Job did. Though he slay me, though it looks like I'm going down for the last time, I got my hand up, I'm going down, I'm drowning, it looks like there's nobody around. And he said, uh, you know, he, he loves me too much to do me wrong. Verse 92, unless thy law had been my delights, I should have then perished in my affliction. He said, if I had not had a right relationship to the Word of God, I would have perished in my affliction. So you see, it works both ways. Affliction drives me to the Bible, but then the Bible helps me to understand and endure the affliction. God, I mean, it's just God's in control. God, he's, he's so wise. In verse 55, I have remembered thy name, O Lord, in the night, 
and have kept thy law. Verse 62, at midnight I will arise to give thanks unto thee because of thy righteous judgments, the righteous word of God. So let me say tonight to you, get a hold on the word of God and let the word of God get a hold of you. Let a direct eviction drive you to the Bible and then let the Bible help you understand affliction. I love the book. The Bible said it is forever settled in heaven. And it is settled in my heart. And I'm totally satisfied with my King James Bible. It has put a light on my path and a lamp to my feet. I am what I am, Paul said, by the grace of God. But I am what I am because of how God worked in my life through this Bible. Affliction will drive you to the Bible. The Bible will help you understand affliction. So we need the Bible. Let's make this year, 2022, a year of the Bible. We read it more. We study it. We think on it. We meditate on it. Get something out of the Bible. Just don't let your eyes look at black ink on black, uh, white paper. Think about it. Meditate day and night, David said. Let's bow for prayer, please.